the tangent function. And the tangent of an angle is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. The next one is the cotangent function. And it is the cosine of the angle divided by the sine of the angle. You may notice that it's just this thing flipped over. You notice that? So we could also say that the cotangent Tangent of an angle T is the same as 1 over the tangent of the angle T that's equivalent to flipping that over. Your book will refer to that as a reciprocal identity if you look at your book. Now, everybody got those last two written up? Now, here are all the reciprocal identities that your book has. Again, I think some of them should be just definitions. I don't like that version. Let's see if the next version is better. Yes. Another of your trig functions is written as CSC, that stands for cosecant, and it's 1 over the sine of the angle. The cosecant of the angle is 1 over the sine of the angle, and vice versa. Make sure you get the bill. And then here's these. And a second or this is the last one we haven't talked about, the secant function, SEC, is 1 over the cosine of the angle. So the secant of an angle is equal to 1 over the cosine of the angle. And then these last two, we kind of already seen, the tangent function of an angle is 1 over the cotangent, and the cotangent of an angle is 1 over the tangent of that angle. Your book calls those reciprocal identities as definitions of these sine and cosine. Now, you're going to probably decide that there are lots and lots of identities <clears throat> officially in here. These, by the way, would never be given on a test. Others might be, we'll have to see. In past semesters, there have been identities provided for test three and as well as the final exam. And I have to check with the coordinators of the course if they're planning to provide the same set of identities that we have in the past years. There's always a big stink over which ones to give you. These, I would tell you, though, will not be there. Now, we already talked about how any point on the unit circle, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. But what did we just define x as? We said x was, the x squared was, no, not sine, cosine. So if we Take the fact that we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1, <coughs> and we replace our x with cosine of the angle, and we replace our y with sine of the angle, so that's the sine of whatever angle it is, then we get this thing that's referred to as the Pythagorean identity. Now, I wrote it this way, and some people write it that way. There's nothing wrong with putting it here. This indicates that you're squaring the function value. This indicates that you're squaring the function value. If you were to write cosine of theta squared, this indicates you're squaring the angle, not the value of cosine of theta. So that's one reason a lot of people write them that way because you can use fewer parentheses. But you'll also see them written this way with the parentheses. Web work writes in both ways. Depends on who wrote the problem. Now there are some related identities to this one. By the way, this is one that usually shows up on the, if they give you a, uh, an identity, this is one that's one of them that they usually give you. If I were to take my identity, We'll go ahead and do this, use this version. If I take this and divide it by cosine of x, cosine squared of theta. When I divide cosine squared of theta by cosine squared of theta, what do I get? One. When I divide sine squared of theta by cosine 
cosine squared of theta, what do I have? Well, what was sine divided by cosine when you looked at the That was the tangent, so this is going to be your tangent of theta squared, because basically I just had it and then I squared it. And then 1 divided by cosine squared of theta, well, what was 1 over cosine? Secant. So this will be secant of theta squared. And that's how you end up with this related Pythagorean identity. What do you think I'm going to divide by to get the next Pythagorean identity? If I take this and divide by sine squared of theta, then I will end up with this next one, which is 1 plus cotangent squared of t equals cosecant squared of t. And I'm probably going to need to write that because there's a lot of people on that side who can't see it. So that one is 1 plus cotangent squared of t equals cosecant squared of t. One of the things you're going to find with working with trig functions is that most of the time we're going to use our sines and our cosines and not so much the things with secants, tangents, cosecants, and cotangents. So occasionally the tangents will come in. So usually we change some of the sines and cosines to make life easier. That's everything you need to know on the unit circle. What we're going to do next time is we're going to look at this same process with using triangles and the special triangles that Tyler mentioned.